geothermal heated lakes where almost any form of life could have survived and even continued up until this point even while the rest of the continent froze over wow. the russians at vostok station confirmed the discovery of a huge freshwater lake buried nearly two miles under the ice cap that they named lake vostok it has attracted a great deal of attention ever since they've successfully drilled through the ice cap and collected active biological samples of living bacteria from a liquid lake that has otherwise been an isolated ecosystem for what scientists claim is as much as 15 million years. Located at the so-called South Pole of Cold, Lake Vostok is nearly as big as Lake Ontario and at 6,000 square miles in surface area, 160 miles in length, and 30 miles of width. It measures to an astounding depth of more than 2,600 feet at some points. And scientists claim they've found more than 3,500 life forms, as well as rich fossil evidence from a time that they've up until now known nothing about. Even more curious, however, was the confirmed discovery of a huge magnetic anomaly on the east coast of this underground lake that spans a vast 65 by 47 miles. Mainstream scientists hypothesize that a thinning of the Earth's crust at that location caused the anomaly, while others suggested a meteorite hit there, while still others suggest that the dimensions of such a significant magnetic anomaly could signify a lost city on the shores of the underground lake. With so much secrecy shrouding Antarctica, do you think the public would be told if something were found there? Interestingly, it parallels the plot here. to the film 2001 A Space wow. Odyssey. Scientists on the moon unearth a vast Tycho magnetic anomaly that proves to be a monolithic signal device from an unseen extraterrestrial race. Hundreds of these subglacial lakes are known to exist and most remain still unexplored. However, when scientists drilled under the ice cap of a much shallower and smaller subglacial lake known as Lake Willems, they found living jellyfish, crustaceans, and even eight-inch translucent pink fish and what they said was an old ecosystem eroding from the ice hovering above the lake. These finds and more continue to fuel speculation, as they have over the past century, that Antarctica is holding on to secret links to mankind's past, and possibly the remnants of ancient civilizations which could have resided there in warmer times. Despite the appearance of being completely peaceful and solely dedicated to international cooperative scientific research, and despite the public being repeatedly told for decades that Antarctica officially holds, quote, no military value, the massive continent and its surrounding islands in the polar region are of great strategic significance. The place doesn't just lay idle and ownerless, and this surrounds perhaps the biggest secret of Antarctica, an open and rather obvious one. The 1959 Antarctic Treaty, signed by a dozen nations that include the U.S., Argentina, Australia, Chile, New Zealand, Norway, Russia, France, and the United Kingdom, put in place the appearance of a harmonious international atmosphere where Cold War hostilities are rejected and peace is permanent. But in reality, major military forces remain embedded there, outwardly serving as the custodians of man's activities on the continent. And it remains true with now 53 signatories. Significantly, the 1959 treaty immediately followed the 1957-1958 International Geophysical Year, which organized dozens of nations to participate in the Antarctic and other parts of the globe to establish permanent scientific bases and conduct unprecedented exploration and experimentation. The recommendation to make 57-58 an IGY event was initiated by astrophysicist Dr. James Van Allen, who was working with the Navy to test his developing theories about the geomagnetic forces that surround the planet, including the intense bands of harmful radiation that bear Van Allen's name. Meteorologist and Navy contractor Harry Wexler was working closely on this research as well and was appointed chief U.S. scientist for the International Geophysical Year, which created a dual pretext for upper atmosphere tests and weather experiments that serve both military and scientific interests, and for creating a permanent military backbone that could provide continuous support for bases, transport, and logistics. The main job that faced the CBs during the second year at Antarctica was the building of five new bases. Each of these stations would supply vital information to the various scientific projects 
of the IGY program. Science gave the U.S., Russia, and Great Britain's military the justification needed for a permanent mission in the South Pole. Operation Deep Freeze was commenced by the U.S. in 1955, two years before the International Geophysical Year, sending thousands of naval and air force troops, as well as militarized construction units from the Navy Seabees, to carve out permanent bases to support the scientific effort. In less than one month, pilots of EX-6 mapped and photographed over a million square miles of territory. Operation Deep Freeze created a never-ending permanent mission for the military.